In this tutorial we're going to create the lawn on the right hand side using maps to control the rotation to give the striped effect on the lawn. So let's go back over into 3D Studio Max. Turn off the safe frames. And again, let's just turn off the forests we made in the previous scene so we can see what we're doing. Create a new forest object. And then this blue spline here is, is for the mode lawn. In fact, it's called spline mode grass. So click on that to distribute. Now, now we don't want the grass going onto the road and we don't want it going underneath the barn. So let's add those as exclude areas. area, object area and then barn, it's fine, and area road. Up, oh, I've picked ground by accident there, so let's just delete that as an exclude area. Let's try and get the barn again. There we go. Okay, let's add our geometry. Uh, in this case, we're just going to go for wild grass. You can add a couple of those, or three if you want. And we're going to set the distribution to dense and set the density to about 5,000. To create even more grass, let's set the threshold to about 10%. Now because we're going to be using maps, we're going to need some kind of surface. And the reason we need that is because the UV, uh, UV mapping that governs the distribution of the map is, is determined by the surface. So we need to come down into surface, click on plus and we'll add the ground. Now it's important to make sure in areas that the surface is actually not on, which it isn't, um, otherwise it becomes very, very large. Now this effect's somewhat difficult to see with the point display. So what we might find is easier is to go into display and turn on proxy's pyramid. That way it's much easier to see which way these are facing. So before we change the maps, let's just go into transform. And we're going to set the translation really high to try and break down the stripes a little bit. So 600% there. And I'm going to set the rotation minimum to minus 70 and maximum to 70. Reason being the X axis is the one we're going to be rotating in order to create the striped effect. So minus 70 will be one way and 70 will be the other. I'm going to set the Y to minus 5 and 5 and the Z is fine as it is. Simply turn on scale and accept the defaults. Now let's open the material editor we want to create a gradient ramp. So, so let's just clear that. Right click, right click, maps, standard, gradient ramp. Let's see what we've got here. So in the middle one here, yeah. If I double click on that and set it to white and hit OK and then change the interpolation to solid. I get a black and white map. Then in the forest object, come back over to your transform. If it gets turned on rotation. And this time we're going to use map for the x-axis only and I'm going to drag this gradient ramp into the map slot as an instance and you can see we're getting a striping effect now there's a second map channel here which has slightly bigger stripes so if we toggle that on you'll see 
they get slightly bigger. And you can see the further out you get, the more evident that effect becomes. There is a second camera in the scene. If you select it and hit render, you should get something that looks roughly like this, which shows the striped effect in action. And this works because the black and white grayscale controls the extremes of this, with, with the black controlling the minimum and the white controlling the maximum. So effectively, I'm toggling between a minimum and a maximum, minimum, maximum, just using that great gradient map, which of course has been tiled a number of times across, across here using the UV coordinates of the ground plane, which you can see is the UV map here. And it's a uh, it's sort of you've tiled sort of 40 times so that's what's causing that effect uh, it's very straightforward but it's a great way of controlling the rotation of your or the scale of your uh, items the final forest object we're going to create will enable us to, to um, paint some ivory up the wall of this foreground bar um, it's not using any new techniques it just goes to illustrate that the uh, the forest objects can be used in in a horizontal and a vertical mode uh, in fact they can take on any rotation but the way this works is that they will adopt the rotation or the axis I should say of either the viewport they were created in or the area that they were first that you first select to create it so in this case because this plane was created in a front viewport and I'm going to use Forest Pro and select that plane the forest object will adopt the local axis of the plane like so so you can see they are kind of protruding out of that surface uh, that's very handy and I think it opens forest even the forest light version up to being used for all kinds of uh, climbing plants or green walls or all manners of other manner of other applications so uh, let's just do this quickly um, we can come into modify go into geometry and add multiple custom objects and there should be three ivy leaves in here Oops, which is auto saving there we go ivy one ivy one two and three and hit add and delete the default now um, these ivy leaves are modeled slightly too large so let's change the size to about 30 percent or maybe slightly larger maybe 35 so let's just get in there and just like with the fence posts I'm just going to turn mesh mode on so we can see what's going on you can see that the ivy isn't really sitting the way you would expect it to so let's go into transform and make a few changes so that these leaves point mostly downwards so I'm going to turn on rotation and set the x to minus 20 uh, minimum and 20 maximum set the y to minus 44 and 10 and on the z axis let's go for minus 65 to 100 uh, minus 120 so uh, they're all approximately pointing downwards now uh, we'll turn scale on and leave it on its defaults and turn translation on and leave that on its defaults too Okay, so somewhat too spread out at the moment. Let's go into the distribution map, set it to dense, set the density to about 4,000 millimeters, and let's take the threshold way down to 10. We've got some pretty good coverage. That's pretty much ready to go now. We'll go into the areas rollout, and at the moment, as you can see, it's distributing over the whole surface. Uh, so we'll turn that surface off, and we'll create a new paint surface, and set the brush size to about 350. That's okay, and click on the paint tool, and then we can start to easily create some ivy on these surfaces. So just painting it on. And have a bit of fun with it. I don't want to cover the whole thing, just a few pieces.
to the, to the fact that from a distance will stand up. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, in the next video, we'll have a look at material optimization, creating a little bit of randomness in our textures using the forest color maps.